52 chefs, Mr. 52 chefs himself up in here. I'm not going to take up any of your time, man. You're too entertaining for me to occupy any more than like 10 seconds. So I'm going to kick it over to you. You know what you're doing. You can host yourself. We're learning about splashes and flashes, food, drink, photography from the man himself. Rocking my little hat twin right there. You guys know the drill. If you have any questions, get them in. And uh, Anthony, your show, man. All right. What's going on, guys? Uh, happy early December. Happy Tuesday. My name's Anthony Nader the first, and I own 52 Chefs. It's a food and cocktail photography company out of Miami. And uh, today, today's a very particular class, very special class to me. Today, we're going to do uh, some splash photography, okay? I'm going to share the screen right here and show you what I'm talking about. Whoop, right here, we are gonna be creating an image much like this one right here, okay? Notice that we have got the splash coming from the top, but also the splash coming from the bottom. The bottle looks like it's in the air, and we're just, we're just gonna get into that right there. Uh, the reason I chose, let me stop share right here, okay. The reason I chose to do this class is because I'm a food and cocktail photographer, but I didn't start out that way. And so I grabbed th different things in my house and seeing what worked for me as far as creating beautiful images of food and drink or uh, packaged food and drink in my house with very common household items. Um, and since we all have to be home or mostly home or spending more time home than ever, which is really good for our rent. You know, we're really actually enjoying what we pay for every month with our rent. But uh, because we have to be home a lot, this is kind of like a home project, even if you're not a food photographer, food and cocktail photographer, that you can get into and possibly make some money from this by building your own in-home portfolio. Um, before we get into it, let me show you my setup right here and my kind of my live setup also we'll start with the camera right here this is a gopro 6 um it is plugged into a cell phone battery charger so that it doesn't turn off and then i have a cam link on my computer that this is connected to via hdmi so it's looking great you know and I, i've also been doing my apple cider vinegar so my face is really smooth okay this is actually my house this is my living room and in new york city this would be the whole space but it's not i have so much more over there and i want to show you guys also it's a little bit of a mess because the cat's been destroying paper but i want to show you that this is my actual apartment on miami beach if anyone's ever been to miami beach uh you get on in, in the you know in the not the macarthur maybe the macarthur yeah I'm, I'm south of Fifth. That's where I am. If you've ever been to Miami Beach. So I'm a real person in a real apartment showing you a real simple photo shoot. Um, right here, I have a light stand. I'm going to be going uh, back and forth between the screen and the camera with the keyboard right here. I have video lights. We're going to get into this right now. Let's, let's dive in a little bit. Okay, so what I'm working with here is actually a D850, but my main camera is actually a D700 still. I know a lot of you cannot believe I'm still shooting on a 13-year-old DSLR with a compact flash system as a memory card system, but uh, I love that camera so much. But I, I upgraded because this one shoots a lot faster, and it's very um, helpful for this photo shoot, catching uh, splashes. My light setup are uh, Godox AD400 Pros. I have three of them. You can actually pick them up on bnh.com. I've got my little remote here. Got a Manfrotto um, gearhead and a Benro uh, tripod legs. That's that's a combo for the for the tripod. Right here, I've got my 27-inch iMac computer from 2012 with a solid-state drive. So you know, I don't I don't mess with the greatest thing that just came out because I really don't need it. If I need something, I get it. But really, like a lot of things already work. So the reason I'm telling you is because you can do this from home with what you have right now. Um, we've got two strip boxes, okay? One foot by four foot, both of them, and they're on the same channel, channel A. So they're gonna have the exact same power. And for simpli uh, simplicity's sake, simplicity's sake, 
uh, we are having symmetrical lighting. I'm not putting this one like behind or in front and this one like a diagonal setup. They're all, they're just next to each other. Okay. Uh, and we have a, what is this? Uh, two by three. Let me, let me stop the camera right in there. We have a two by three soft box right there, creating a very soft light on this. Um, I don't know what color you would call this. It's a, it's a nice, not green green okay and that's my favorite color green it's a not green green it's like pre-forest green and that's going to go well with our product that i'm going to show you right now but um i'm using a softbox on the background and i'm bouncing light off of these white boards on the bottom so that the light comes from the top and the bottom and you don't get that uh like the paper texture. And also these are kind of aimed to the back. So you're getting light from all angles of the background to get as smooth a color as possible in the background. Also, we're gonna be shooting like a F11. Um, the lens on the camera is a 110 millimeter macro, uh, actually the older version of the lens, which I'm a big fan of. Can you guys see that? There you go. And, uh, that's the lighting setup. That's basically it for the lighting. Now, I want to bring you over here to what exactly what we're going to do with uh, these kitchen items. And excuse my cats, they're walking around. Um, okay, so today we're going to be photographing my friends at Chinola. Uh, Chinola is a passion fruit liqueur out of uh, Santo Domingo. Not Santo Domingo. I don't know exactly where it's from, from the Dominican Republic, but it is a Central American Caribbean uh, liqueur that you can put in anything and it tastes really good. Uh, they didn't ask me to do this. I chose to ask them for a few bottles because the photos come out. Let me see how I put this. It's easier to do these splash photos with a liquid that has color in it versus maybe shooting a vodka or a gin that doesn't have color because then the background really matters. But if you photograph something that has color on it, okay, it's gonna be very easy to cut out of the frame if you wanted to do that. Also, this green background goes very well with these, uh, you know, these leafy details. And on the color wheel, this makes a lot of sense being yellow, blue, and green. Uh, I think that's a triangular theory. Anyways, uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. This is actually the bottle we're gonna open and pour over uh, perfect bottles, which are actually in the fridge right now, because when I pull them out of the fridge, I'm in Miami, right? So there's a lot of humidity. So when I put it up and set it up, it's going to get a little bit of humidity. It's going to look cold. And then we're going to pour this juice over a cold bottle and it's going to be mwah, perfection. Um, okay. And also the reason why I'm showing you this is because if you like Tabasco, okay, you can buy like five bottles of Tabasco, empty out two of them, and then shoot the same exact photo shoot of Tabasco by pouring Tabasco on a Tabasco bottle. You can do the same exact thing with that. You can do it with beer. You can do it with wine. You can do it with anything you want. And the whole point of this photo shoot is to show you how to do this so that you can then on your own time shoot it, yes, but also send those pictures to those, uh, you know, the, the, the companies through Instagram or however you want to do it and say, Hey, look, I'm shooting from home. Really love your product. Check it out. Feel free to use it. Tag me. And then you can start that relationship with some of your favorite products. And to be honest, if you're super broke, you can shoot through your whole freaking kitchen and do the same thing because what else is there to do than thrive out here? You know? So, uh, we're going to get to that. And the way, <laughs> the way we are going to do this is, is just marvelous. I did it the other day with my friend's Coquito company, and I decided we're going to do the same here. So the contents of what we're shooting with, I have an enormous bowl that I bought at Ross for 15 bucks. It's huge. I'm going to give you an idea of how big it is. It's really, really big. Okay, and this is probably for uh, large scale baking, but you know, Ross has the random stuff and also the biggest size of them shoes ever. I don't know who buys them, but uh, I, got, I got one of those big people's bowls. Okay, and this is primarily to catch the liquid. Then I got a regular bowl and I put that upside down into it. Okay, 
If you're in the restaurant or bar industry, you know what this is. This is a regular quart container full of water for weight. I'm gonna put that on there. This is a piece of plexiglass. You can get anything flat. It does not to have, uh, have to be transparent to work. I'm gonna put it here. And this is a star of our show, okay? I don't have a name for him yet, so if you guys wanna name him, hit me in the comments with the name for this guy. But this is basically a wine holder. You would put this, let me uh, twist the camera down here. Okay. One would lean their bottle of booze on this, okay? This is exactly what this is for, and I found it at a thrift shop for about a dollar, okay? And this is what we're gonna do this photo shoot on. I'm telling you guys, I didn't wanna get technical with you. I actually don't get technical in my personal or professional life because I just, I don't wanna start a museum of very specific tools for very specific uses, and I'm not a very specific guy. So you can find anything like this at a thrift store or on online or anywhere just as long as it's a bottle holder at an angle, okay? See, we can roll the bottle as long as it's on the angle, okay? So this is, this is our setup, this is our whole setup. And what it's gonna look like is this, right here, right here, all right, right? Now to be fair, I waited, before I secure this so, so I can show you guys that I'm actually securing this on camera and not like, you know, like I'm making it look cheap but a really expensive stuff or like a maneuver that you guys didn't know about. Uh, you can also use a glass vase. This is just too tall for it, but we're gonna do a practice shot so you see what it is and then I'm gonna secure it with white tape, okay? So let's take a practice shot here. I'm using a 105 millimeter macro lens. However, it doesn't have to be a macro, whatever you're using. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna put this camera right here. It's just some travel, traveling and light stands because they, they're so much easier to work with. All right, so let's see. Let's see if I'm in the right place. I'm not. I'm gonna go live mode here. Uh, actually, I'll just put it right behind the camera. What happened, baby? Turn on, baby. Okay, there you go. Good morning. Okay, she doesn't wanna, she doesn't wanna wake up right now. You know the technical difficulties come in when you're right in the middle of it, but you've been practicing all day? Yeah, you know that. You know, it's not, something's wrong if something's not wrong, you know? Okay. Uh, maybe it's, is that my manual here? Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Oh, because it's tethered, that's why. Okay, let's go to the tether. Yeah. That was not the best shot in the world. So in Tether, it doesn't go live screen, except if you do it on Capture One. I know Capture One does, but Lightroom has not done that yet. All right. So this is what we're getting. We're getting really good detail on the paper right here. It's still loading. These are over 50 megapixel pictures, so they're still coming in. Again, maybe uh, capture one is faster, but you know what? I started out with Lightroom and we're gonna keep it Lightroom, baby. Look how good that looks. Of course, later on, we're gonna select out the bottle and make the background a solid green, but uh, this is very close to what we're getting in here, if you can see it. You guys get that? Oh, you guys notice also all of these B&H classes I take? That's why my brain is so big. Do you guys see the beginnings of this photo taking shape? I do, for sure I do. Okay, let me get out of uh, screen sharing. Let's come back to me. Oh, my cat just smelled the thing. Oh, that's great. Thanks, baby. I really need you to do that. This is actually not that important, but because he messed it up. 
And for the sake of uniformity, we're going to do it that way. So you guys getting the picture? We're going to shoot it like this. And because I'm a one-man band today, I want to show you that this is possible not only to teach but to do. So we are going to pour that liquid into a to-go container that has a relatively flat lip with a little bit of curve on it so that the liquid goes down like this. If it's circular, whatever you're pouring out of, it's gonna come out very sharp, like a V. And if it's completely flat, what you're pouring out of, it's gonna cascade over it. And really what I wanna do is go uh, kind of like a U shape onto the, the bottle, the liquid, U shape onto the bottle. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pour that liquid in here. We're gonna get one of the bottles from the fridge. We're gonna shoot it, and then we're gonna flip it upside down, shoot that, put them together in Photoshop, and we're gonna chit chat. Uh, so before I do all that, I must secure everything in front of you guys. You guys know what you're doing. How am I doing, Derek? You're doing great, man. You're making me thirsty. Man, get you a drink, baby. Oh, see, I just finished coffee, but it's, it's not what I want right now. Spike that coffee, baby. <laughs> You guys know, I mean, you don't know. You don't know me at all. Unless you follow me on 52 Cent, which Derek might know this. But uh, this month will be one year that I, do, uh, that I go without drinking alcohol um, as a food and cocktail photographer. So you can imagine how heavy my, uh, my kitchen's looking in, in, in the booze department. Um, but it's possible. Any, anyone trying to quit out there, it's possible. Uh, I personally quit because the hangovers were costing me way too much. Uh, and I wanted to get more serious about my, my craft. But I, last Christmas was the last time I really drank at all. Um, and it's been great. I feel great. I feel great. But for the purpose of selling booze today with Chinola, lovely Chinola, you should absolutely drink alcohol. On my behalf, actually. Drink for me and you. I have glitter coming off on this tape from the previous photo shoot, so. And maybe I like to cross dress at night, but who knows? Who knows where I have glitter all over this? So I'm taping the pork container to the upside down bowl. And the purpose of the bowl is really to catch the liquid in case you start running out of the liquid that you're shooting on. Okay, it's gonna catch it. And then you can use like a turkey baster to bring it back out of it. Okay, we're going to do a plate here. We're going to see where the bottle is going to go in terms of the guy's feet. This is not the most professional thing, but it is the most professional photo. So we have to think about those things. All right, so I'm kind of wanting it here and his feet touch there. So I'm going to tape the plexiglass as such. Okay. Hold one finger down so it doesn't move. Take one end of it, don't move it. Okay. Take the other end of it down, don't move it. Obviously this is not gonna matter in the photo shoot because we are gonna be cutting the bottle out, but I just don't want it to fall over. And now this is here and I wanna take the guy's feet to this thing. I really don't want Chinola all over my floors right now. So maybe I'll get this heel right here. I'll tape them down. All right. There we go. This is great. This is Jerry rigged to the third degree. Do you guys see this? Masterpiece. I should sign this. I should just, I should sign this. It's like, here you go. 52, baby. Come buy this at Art Basel in Miami right now. It's going to be a relic in 100 years. Okay. So let's, let's kind of test this out. I'm on here, whatever. Let's see how it's doing. Ooh, I need more tape on that. Why are we testing it? Because when I pour liquid on it, we're going to add weight to it in all kinds of directions. So I don't want this falling. I don't want this falling. You don't want this falling either, bro. Okay, so this is pretty good. 
I could put one more piece of tape on this. Again, this is the only thing I wanted to wait until the class was happening to show you guys uh, that not everything is like glitz and glamour. Actually, nothing is. Basically, nothing is. And we still get it done as humans. These are tough times calling for jerry rig methods. Okay, there you go. Cool. Great. Lovely. Loving touch. Okay, now, Chinola. We're going to mix the chinola up. Okay, we're going to pour some right here. Beautiful. I think that's all I'm going to do. I think that's a little much, actually. So what we're trying to get in these photos, if you notice the complete photo in, in, the, in, the, you know, in the ad for the class, we just want the beginnings of the, flash, uh, the splash. We don't want all of it. We don't want all of it because it's gonna cover the label, it's gonna get crazy. We also have two bottles to work with because uh, the bottle could get wet. Now let's say you're shooting a vodka and the vodka's bottle's paper. If you wet it, it's paper, you can set it to dry. If you wet it with vodka, it's gonna dry faster. This is gonna dry with the color. It probably won't dry because it's so thick and it's got some sugar in it. So we gotta be careful. We only have three bottles, one of which I already cracked. So when we're pouring, we need a lot of control. We're gonna take pictures with our left hand to make sure we get the beginnings of the splash. Um, and then when we're finished with that, we're gonna flip the bottle upside down right here. We're gonna shoot it like this originally, and then we're gonna flip the bottle upside down and shoot it again and I'm gonna pour from here, coming down on the top of the bottle. So with those two, we're gonna make a composite. Um, I'm gonna go grab the other Chinola bottles that are in the fridge. Uh, Derek, do you have any questions for me? I do have a question while you're doing that. Do you ever um, use non-edible solutions for shoots like this? I know a lot of people, you know, it's like, you know, milk is, kind of yellow when you photograph it. So a lot of people use a mixture of glue and water. Do you ever use any tricks like that or do you always use the real product? Um, so I feel like shoots like that are, for example, if you're photographing cereal, the cereal company doesn't care what color the milk is. But if you're shooting for a milk company, I have, I have received this feedback specifically that I have to pour the product. They cannot recreate it to make it thicker or thinner. It's gotta be what it's gotta be. It's gotta be to the color. We cannot change anything. And it gets into legal matters with, with the company. Uh, some companies are so big, like the Serono Velvet uh, came out this year and I couldn't shoot with anything else. And if I wanted the De Serono thicker, I would freeze it because it's, well, I'd put it in the freezer for a time because I don't know if the Serono Velvet would freeze, but like vodka and gin, they never freeze. You can put them in the freezer for 20 years, it will never freeze. So, but making it colder does um, make the viscosity thicker, which is good for pouring, okay? Uh, that's about as far as I can go with a product is making it colder. But in terms of, let's say I'm gonna photograph for a vodka company, I cannot pour water because it looks different. It physically looks different. If you see a bartender pouring out of a pour stop, pouring vodka, there's, there's a seamless line up until the end where the vodka hits the jigger that it breaks up, but it's so viscous that it'll keep together. If you pour water like that, a few inches out of the pour spout, it starts creating droplets and it, it breakage, you know, like it uh, starts separating because it's not that viscous. So for that reason and many other reasons, uh, let's say the vodka is like light pink and you're like, okay, we'll shoot this vodka. We'll make it light pink in post. No, you, you got to shoot the product and they don't, they, they just don't want to deal with the headache of telling legal that, you know, they, they switched it and it shoot and all this. And, and so if it's not the product I'm shooting, I will change some things. If it is, I, I rather just shoot the product. 
Uh, but because I shoot a lot of, you know, beer and wine and liquors, I stick to the real deal. Um, if we're shooting a gin and it's going into a Negroni, and I don't want to use Campari, the red component that makes Negronis red, I'll put grenadine in it because I want to keep my Campari because it's $45 a bottle, but I won't switch out the gin. And if I told the company that, they would make me use Campari, which maybe they're paying for it because I don't even drink it. So uh, <laughs> you just let them know, like, yo, I got this grenadine or I got this real stuff that we're going to waste because I don't even drink. Um, I hope that's a really, really complicated answer to your simple question. I just, I'm praying for that. No, that was, that was perfect. I actually, I, w I didn't even think about the legal aspect about like, yeah, I mean, you really have to present there's come on the the legal aspect makes a lot of things trickier when yeah. it comes to that because there's always a lawsuit out lawsuit out there lurking but i didn't think about it in regards to even just like presenting a legally succinct product yeah that's and and that's that's what it is and hey i play ball i play ball it's all good it's, it's not impossible um i actually just got silicone mixture for ice cubes and they look really good. And if we have time later, I'll show you what I've been doing with it. But it's hilarious that it's not ice, but it looks like ice. Um, let's, let's jump into this. Let's make a mess. Oh, before I make a mess, I bought black towels. And I put them on the floor so I don't have to, like, deal with a floor with passion fruit liqueur. And that's a mistake I did with, you know, other splashes. Um, splashes go everywhere. They go on your lights, your softbox. I've had splashes hit my front door from a distance, my computer screen from like five feet. Um, because this stuff is viscous and kind of sugary, it's gonna stick together more, but something that splashes more or something that's warm, like this is kind of warm, so it, it might splash, it's probably gonna ruin things. Uh, the, the paper white, the not white, but the paper background might get wet and destroyed. Um, so yeah, we're laying towels for sure. Uh, another detail that I did not share with you guys is if you plan on kind of um, kind of changing your business, your photography business to in-home studio photo shoots, not necessarily food shoots, but maybe you should definitely consider getting um, a rack for it. You see that? It's screwed right to my ceiling, and I can change them out, and you can get a set of B&H. You can buy everything I'm mentioning at B&H. This D850 was actually bought used on B&H, so shout out to the used department at B&H. Um, and yeah, I mean, I have a lot of paper. I can roll some more out, but uh, all right, let's, let's get into it. There's been a lot of talking, baby. Let's get into this. Yeah. Okay, how are we going to do this? I am, yeah, I'm going to go back and forth on the computer. I'm going to put this right by the camera. This is a good vantage point. How am I doing on time? 30 minutes? I've been talking a lot, baby. I got to edit. Yeah, you're that. good. 30 minutes and uh, plenty of time for more Howard Dean. Howard Dean heard. <laughs> Okay, yeah. um, this is the setup. I'm gonna pour with my right hand, shoot with the left. This is how we do it by ourselves, okay? This is a manual focus already. I've already put the bottle, remember I put the autofocus, flipped it to manual. Yep, it's on manual. So this is not only gonna like stay in the same place focally, but also you're gonna be able to max out your uh, frames per second on any camera you're doing. The camera says six, but with autofocus, it does like four because it's trying to autofocus. We're not going to have that issue. Manual mode, bottle. Also, we're shooting on a 100, actually 105 millimeter. I said 110 millimeter earlier because I'm going to blame COVID for it. Um, 105 millimeter. The farther I go, or the more telephoto my lens is, uh, the more true to life the bottle is. If I shoot it with a wider lens, not only is it going to distort the qualities of the bottle, but uh, your camera's also going to be really close to the splash zone, baby, and we don't want that. We don't want that. Not in this circumstance. 
Other other splash zone circumstances, go for it, but not this. Not this. Oh no. So we're gonna do that. Um, I've got this over here. Let me turn off my video lights so they do not. Ah, uh, they probably won't. When you do this at home, turn off all the lights in your house, okay? All right, so we've got this beauty. It's kind of cold. It's not showing up too cold, but that's okay. I always check the bottles. Oh, yeah, the black towels also. I always check the bottles for fingerprints because I do not want to Photoshop out fingerprints after I've done so much work. And on that note, I always wipe the bottles down with something black uh, because black does not reflect light as much as white does, or in this case, white lint. So it's kind of like if you miss some edits on some lint particles, if they're black, they don't show up as much as if they were white. So let's lay these down. All right, one. Black towels are the best. All right. You can use any kind of towel, but uh, again, black, like if you use a white towel, you might get some uh, extra bounce in your photo that you don't want. And no one wants that. Okay, I only have use for uh, three, three towels. How are we looking? We ready? Ready to make some magic? Let's do it. Let me get this right. Perfect. Okay. Peter, why why no remote trigger? You never uh, never went for a remote trigger. Yeah, but so when you're capturing a flash, you don't know exactly uh, when or how much delay the camera's gonna have between the moment you press your finger down and what's actually happening, what part of the splash. So I start shooting before the splash is in the frame, and because this shoots at least six frames a second. I'm gonna get six frames of that splash coming down. And with the remote trigger, you could probably hold down a remote trigger and do it. I'm just ghetto. Yeah. That's, that's the reason. Would you guys take that? <laughs> ghetto? Is that a... We'll, we'll, we'll take it, we'll take it. You know, for slower shoots, I actually mouse over uh, the, the window in Lightroom for tethering. You know, you could click a button. I lift my mouse from the table, and when I fix something, I click the mouse in the air, and the tether shoots. There's a lesson, wow. you know. I'm from hey, Miami, old school, bro. Baby. Old know. school, baby. Like it works. It works. It works. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh I boy, I I love being kind of like you know, kind of ghetto a little bit. It, it's helped a lot. It's up a lot. I'm not that ghetto, but I'm ghetto. Okay, gorgeous. Where are we at with this? Let's see. I'm looking at the screen. I'm not gonna show guy show you guys the screen. Okay, this is kind of tilted. One second. I kept the base bowl inside untaped because I can move the entire thing and rotate the entire thing without having to move the whole setup. And that's good for me. That's beautiful on my end. I'm gonna do this just a little bit and I'm gonna move the camera just a little bit. Okay. I don't need you guys to see this. That's why I'm just doing it without you. Just making sure our splash zone is perfect. Okay, we're good. You guys ready? You want to count me down? Let's do it. Okay, I'm going to splash it particularly from the long end of the packaging and not the short end, the long end, because I want a long splash, okay? You guys ready? Oh, one more very important part. We are going to be pouring on, like, where to pour. You got, you got to aim. We want to hit here because it's kind of flat. And so it's gonna like that, it's gonna If we pour it here, it's gonna splash on the neck and not hit the body and we want it to hit the body. So we're gonna do it here and it's gonna go right? Uh, 
I'm also going to be ready with a towel to dry the label as soon as we do that, because I don't know how many chances I get with this. But the important part is that we take a photo of this before with nothing in it. Um, actually, we're going to lift it up in the air and take a picture of the whole bottom of it. But with this picture already, I have the dry label. So I'm only looking for the splash. And then when we turn the bottle upside down, okay, we're only going for the splash. We're not going for the bottom of the bottle because we already have it in the shot. Let me, let me do a test shot just in the air because we need the bottom of this bottle too, just in case. All right. Oh, and when we turn it, uh, when we turn it upside down, we need to make sure that the bottle's exactly in the same position as it is now here. And so that's going to be simple to do. I got you. So let's see if I put it back exactly right. Gorgeous. Ready? You guys want to cut me down? Three, two, one. Get them. Beautiful. That was perfect. Let's get the towel. Oh, let's check it out. Wait, zoom. Share. You guys seen that? Oh, nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna dry the label, but I'm gonna go back a little bit. It's beautiful. How about that initial? That's pretty good. Ah, see, that's our initial. So I missed a little bit. You know what? That's okay. I forgive myself. Let's try it again. Mm, if you can only smell my house right now. Okay. Oh no. The smell of passion fruit. Smell of passion. I'm going to get it on the body. Okay. <laughs> One more time. You know what? I'm such a genius that I didn't put this to uh, multi photo. I only put it to single. Continuous, baby. So you're, you're off. Cancel. Huh? No, you're good. You're focused. I'm, I'm over here talking smack. Oh, uh, okay. I'm like, what? He's focused. Look at this. He's, he's intense right now. I'm focused, man. I'm reading this shit upside down, too. Hold on, man. Ah, uh, we don't need to do this, actually. Trigger finger. Okay. On three. Ready? One, two, three. I think I wet my cat. Okay. <laughs> One more time. One, two, three. Okay, we got enough splash in it. Oh man, I gotta wash my cat. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let's go here. G. What are we getting? All right, that's not bad. We could do something with this one for sure. Yeah. Splashes are nice. That's good. All right, we're looking for one more winner. Let's uh let's hop back out. We got 20 minutes. You guys with me? Yes, sir. What's the uh we got a question. So Gendra here who's joining us on yeah. Zoom. Um part of it part of it was just seen from the angles. Yeah. But what's the refresh rate on the flashes you're using? I mean, is there any issue? Are you having any issue? Are you refreshing fast enough to capture the multiple frames that you're capturing? Uh, so I'm shooting so fast that the beeps uh, are, are like being interrupted. So it's not beeping after every flash, but I'm pretty sure it is only because my you can see it in the results, are right? 30 second power and they're fresh batteries. Okay. Okay, and my back okay. my backlight is at one twenty eighth power plus 0.7. so it's it's not that bad for refresh. Plus, uh, they're big flashes. Um, now I tell people when I use flash units, and I'm gonna do a lot of, of photos with the flashes. I put two flashes next to each other, and I put them in the same group or three, and so they all flash. Like if you needed a one to one, 
I'd get four flashes and I'd put them all at a fourth or, you know, however that works out mathematically or physically, like you just see if it's too bright or not. But that's how I control my refresh. I'm saying that because I have 15 flash units here at my house. Uh, so I actually do things like that. Um, but right now I'm just flexing the Godox 8400s so you get a, a BNH photo. Actually, you know, I paid like 600 bucks each and uh, on Black Friday it went down to like 400 something. So uh, I'm not upset or anything, but you guys should really go get that if that's the deal. Because I bought three and three at $400 each means you could have bought a fourth one for the money I spent. Uh, but I'm rich and these are rich problems. Let's get on the show. Let's do it. It helps to have some water. Next tape coming out soon. You see this thing got ruined. Uh, you can't see. Believe me. But we're still going to use it. Upside down. My man right here has a puddle. So we're going to just soak that up. Soak out the puddle. So well, I know you, you briefly mentioned it before, Nader, about, you know, how many takes you don't know and, and some of the labels. I mean, I guess some labels are better sealed than others, but there's got to be some products where it's like one pour and you're risking even a slight tint to the to the, the bottle. Are you doing, do you generally do a number of frames from different angles of just the bottle to make sure you have like at least a good stock image to work off of if you need to clone in later? And that's what I did in the beginning. Yeah, I lifted it up and I photographed it so that the bottom is visible. Uh, but that's a beautiful opportunity to tell the liquor company that you need at least six bottles. You know? <laughs> but some, like if I'm shooting Grey Goose, like that label is whatever material it is, vinyl or whatever, but nothing's paper about it. So you can just wipe it. Some bottles are like that, some are not. De Serona Velvet, uh, the bottle is like not glass it's not see-through at all it's a white material bottle so wiping that down was cake it was nothing it wasn't even see-through actually i was shooting an empty bottle because you couldn't see in it i was shooting i was pouring the liquids that were in it on it because it was it wasn't a see-through bottle and you're going to start to see that bottle companies are now coming out with like wood bottles so that's beautiful for me all right, doctor's in the house. We're gonna go upside down with this baby. Bam. And we are going to secure her. It's a girl now. Right here. And right here. Okay, this is not secure enough. No, this is not even sticking. This would probably be the trickiest part of this photo shoot in the A. Okay, so it's important to rotate the bottle to exactly what it was showing beforehand. Let me, uh, let me redo this completely, because this sucks. I didn't even wipe it down. Uh, food photographer problems, okay? This needs some water. Be right back, or read me some questions. Get those questions in. Nobody's got any questions. Come on, throw something in. I'm trying to think what I would, what I would want to know. I mean, I'm, obviously you need to do post on this. What's your, uh, what's your main, the, the main uh, workflow for post? Are you a Lightroom guy? Are you old school? We know you're old school. So, but do you go new school with the Lightroom? Do you use old school Photoshop one by one? We're gonna do both. We're gonna select the best frames and rate them one to five. I'm gonna rate them two, the best frames. We're gonna export those full, full res uh, into, well, we're gonna export them, yeah, onto the desktop and then pull those into Photoshop, cut them out, put them together, Frankenstein, and it's gonna look great. Um, that's, yeah, that's the method. And it's, you know, we're photographing for one position and that's why I took those preliminary shots. But if it's several positions, this is an all day shoot, you know, um, this don't come easy. I'm trying to do it in an hour. I got 12 minutes. We can do this. This is fine. Everything's fine. 
this is fun. I'm that dog with this house on fire. Okay, my man, my man got a, a winter scarf made out of tape. That's holding well. Again, your wine holder might do a better job. Whatever you decide to get. I'm gonna run a piece of tape along the back of this onto my dude. I really hope this doesn't fall on live TV or this is TV, right? No one has TV anymore. This is as live as, as it gets. Okay. Yeah, this is as live as we get. This is a good thing. This is good. Now, there's a trick to this. And the trick is because the bottle was leaning back in the original photo of it upright, now we got to bring the camera up and down so that the bottle looks like it's leaning back when it's upside down. You guys, uh, you don't know Mandarin Chinese by now? <laughs> what have you been doing nine months? Not that. Okay. I'm gonna lift the camera up. Oh man, I got, I got passion fruit on my hands. My camera's gonna taste good now. <laughs> Let's get through this, baby. Okay, so I am going to aim the camera down. This is kind of working out. Because I didn't take the bottom, we can still move it. This is good. This is a good thing. All right, let me see what I'm getting. You guys see me or this? Beautiful. Kind of. When your tripod does not open anymore, you close the legs artificially <laughs> and you pray for no wind. Okay. All right, let's rotate this down. I'm just gonna I'm gonna shoot without looking like from the hip. What's going on here? That's beautiful. Okay, now I can shoot from the hip. I'm gonna focus this thing. I'm six foot, so it works. I'm six one, actually. It works out. If not, get an Apple box or make an Apple box. Because like I said before, what else are you doing for these nine months? Okay, this is looking spectacular. I'm just gonna twist this a little bit this way. Okay, let's do it again. You guys ready? I'm running out of time, baby. Woo! It's not a song. We're going to get you back just to sing for an hour. Oh, yeah. In January. Let's do it. Let's do it, baby. There we go. Start 2021. You guys know I'm doing another class in January, right? You know what? I did not know yep. that. I Shame on me. Oh, yeah. I'm going to photograph squirrels biting my finger. <laughs> You know what? You caught me, caught me mid drink over here. I almost spit my water up and choked on it. <laughs> Anthony's taking a, a very obvious shot at me. For those of you who do not follow me on Instagram and did not see me get attacked by a squirrel over the weekend, Prime. <laughs> I'm still here, still, still right. here, haven't died yet. We ready? We're gonna hit it right here. I want the liquid to be holding the bottle, baby, holding it up. You know, even though it's a, a, like a spill, it's got to hold it up. All right, you ready? One, two, three. That was a delicious disaster. And I'm going to mop the hell out of my house after this. I think I got that. I don't trust it. We're going to do it three times. It kind of hit the back, the, the you know, the, background the green background so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it down a notch one two three uh, that works uh, one more and this is wasteful someone could be getting drunk off of this 
Oh man, I want to say what I have in mind. But it's 2020, I can't. Also, I've lived in New York, so like now I'm woke and I can't say jokes that I used to. Okay, one, two, three. All right, we're done, baby, we're done! Dunzo! Now, let's jump onto the computer. Let me move things so I don't knock anything down. Okay. We need like a, uh, we need another camera angle to show. What, are you walking in like three, three inches of chinola over there? No, but check out. It's gotta be a mess. Check out my socks, baby. Let's see, let's see, let's see the disaster that happened. Okay, we've got that. That's not too bad, huh? That's bad, we got, we got little dots. How are the lights? Lights are okay. Not They're too right. bad. It's not too bad. This nah. is, this is, you know, I, I just can't let it dry. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, paper. It's paper, baby. We can, we can get another. Uh, all the more reason to back up from your photo shoots. So I'm going to put the computer to this screen. All right. I'm going to stay on the computer now the, the rest of this time. You guys seeing what I got? Yes, sir. All right, perfect. My hands are not exactly dry, so let me dry them up part of the towel okay cool now let's take it from the top baby all right so my method is that i press caps lock and then i press ones and twos so caps lock just moves it on to the next one after a rating of one or a two this is a pretty good one i'm going to give that one a two i'm going to be very selective about this two two just in case okay let's get these splashes in this is okay I'll keep that. This one's like, this is kind of seductive. I like that too. I love this one. I love this one. We're keeping that. This is a little much. A little much. Okay. Let's see. It's loading, loading. All right. With the pour. That's all right. I hit the back of the bottle if you guys can see that. And what I should have done is clean up the bottle. So now you got the residue from the one previous. But this is pretty good. And you know what? Chinola is not that thick. You can kind of see a lot through it. So that's a surprise. We're going to keep this right here. This could serve as like an arrow that I can, I can put on the side of it. Let me show you what I mean by arrow. Okay, so in this photo shoot, I, I gave this some arrows of that same photo shoot. So I can duplicate that same one and point at the bottle. Okay? Uh, all right. I'm going to speed up here just for the sake of it. This is all right. We're going to keep that. No, not this, not this, not this. Okay, we're upside down now. You see how I had to bring the camera up to get that, that, that bottle, that bottom of the bottle? This is nice. This is too much. This is nice. I can combine this with a thicker splash up here. So I'm going to do that. Looking for a thicker splash right there. I got it. What is this? This is like extraterrestrial right there. How to go back up? What is going on here? This is nice. I'm going to keep that. Okay. This is beautiful. Okay. Cool. Whatever. Great. We rated. Okay. So we're at the two stars right here. Let's rate these three stars. So this for sure. Uh, this one, not that one. What's our winner? What's our winner today? Um, I like this stream and the splash. Uh, yeah. See, the more splashes, the better. Let's move on to the bottom. This is great. This is great. This is great. That's it. I got them. Okay, so my threes. My threes are right here. Of course, because of Lightroom, uh, we could just edit the first one and apply the edits to the rest of it. So I have some presets here. Clarity. This is good. It's a little yellow. Let's see what this does for me. That's all right. That's good. It's a little green to me. Now, gorgeous. Okay, so select out, select all, Command Shift S, synchronize settings, Command E, 
Okay, Casa Merch. Today is the 9th of BH Chinola. Okay, underscore FR for full res. We're going 300 screen sharpening. Whoa, okay. No. Specific folder. No, I want desktop. Yeah. Oh, and I'm in all caps still. All right. Doing that. That is occurring. I'm going to start Photoshop while this comes out. How do you guys feel about this? Can you do it at home? What's up? How you feeling? How you feeling? Tell me your feelings. Man, I got a three and a half year old. I got enough mess over here. I, I think I would, uh, I don't know. Tell me some of your I wouldn't feelings. want to clean it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be doing it in the bathtub. I'd have to do shoot in the bathtub so I could just wash it all away. I know. I gotta find my cats and wash them. Okay. But that's the fun of it, you know. If you're if you're quarantined with your kids and you've run out of things to do, make a mess, bro. Make a mess. Well, just come on. Larissa's got you. Larissa says, "Si se puede." Si se puede, baby. That's my twin. I love her so much. There you go. Um. Photoshop is loading. That's why. Oh, you can actually see. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. Photoshop, come on. Oh, I'm opening Premiere. Why the hell? He's making. He's he's editing videos for us on the spot. I know. It's on site. Okay, Chanola's coming in, gorgeously. A little bit here. We're gonna look at the old uh, coquito shot I did. Oh, these are other photos. Same green background. Whatever. Um, all right. We're almost there. We're almost there. Okay, we're in. Bam. Drag them in. I'm sure there's a more professional way to drag it in. I do what I want. Okay. Let's, let's go back to the screen stuff. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> so do you see how crazy this is looking right now? <laughs> It's like a rocket or something. It's funny. Um, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna grab, okay, oh no. I'm gonna move you, okay. I need you out the way. I'm gonna grab, yeah, this is my main main, my main thing, so I'm gonna grab this hold shift command just to drop it right over it. Okay, so this is my main thing. So I'm gonna get rid of this so I don't get uh, confused. So now my main file is all the way to the left. Now all we gotta do is seek out the dope bottom file, which is this one. Okay. This one with the flow. All right, and this one with a little wing. All right, so now we have, well, we'll save this as, you know, underscore PSD so we don't lose all the files. And now right here, I'm gonna make a copy of the background because that always confuses me. Okay, now these three, I'm gonna hold shift, click all three, uh, command shift G, oh no, command G, bottom, Okay, so these come later, and now this needs to be dealt with. So what's going on here is that I am going to, I'm going to kind of delete this little guy out of here. This is really guerrilla tactics over here. No, what am I doing? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Whatever's touching the guy, I want it out. Beautiful. Now I press uh, V for this, this pointer up here, and five, oh no, V5 for 50%. Let's just drop them on top of each other. Uh, and that's not gonna match up perfectly, but that's okay. Okay, so we, we have some good separation. Beautiful. I'm going to delete more of this.
Beautiful. And now I'm going to grab this and I'm going to make it a brush and I'm just really going to kind of unprofessionally do this because of the lack of time. But just so you see how we have a floating bottle here. You guys see how that happens? Okay. Uh, anyways, I'm going to grab this and make it this color. Okay, green. Okay, now for our bottoms, I grab, you guys still with me? I can't, like, I can't really see. Nah, we're still here. Okay. Patiently, patiently watching this come together. Okay, so check it out. On top, we've got this wing, and I want to keep the wing. Under that, I've got the splash, but I only want the splash. So I'm going to bring the wing back, and I'm just going to delete where the, where the back splash is incoming, okay? And I'm going to delete just what's on top. So now these are merged, okay? And now let's see what's going on with you. Oh, I have two wings. You know what? I'm going to ax that one out. So these two are good. Uh, again, a little bit unprofessionally. I'm going to smash these together. I'm going to take out the bottom. I'm going to put bottom master. So I have bottom master. Uh, so I have that in the back of my mind. And now I'll flip this around. I'll hold shift so that it clicks. Now this bottom is one file. This top is another. I'm going to press... Uh, I don't know what this is called. I always forget. Move tool, okay? And then I'm going to press 5 for 50% opacity. And I'm going to line it up right about here. And then we're going to go back to 100%. And now I'm going to delete off the top half of this picture so that we only have the beautiful bottom with the beautiful top. And this is how, this is how you do it. Of course, you can Mom, do this Montel, way, that's... way better than what I what I what I just explained for sure. But do you guys see what's going on here? I'm just gonna post it like this, man. Why not? Why not? You see how delicious this is looking? You see, you got to keep the people hanging on the edge of their seats. You got to say, "Follow me on Instagram to see the oh, final right. image." You're right. You're right. It's total total missed opportunity. Follow me. And tell your sister. How's that? <laughs> I got five sisters, so watch it. Oh no! <laughs> tell, tell anyone else's sister. Tell your boy's sister. There you go. Someone else's sister. You guys see that? You guys see how you can like create something like this so beautiful? Uh, right at home. A amount of time. I, I almost clicked leave. No. Edit some pics, then leave. And so now. We have this beautiful, scrumptious photo. We have laced together, again, this is a composite of three images, uh, three images actually. Um, of course, it's not perfect right now, but we've got, we, we were able to choose this part. We were able to choose the little flag. It's actually out of focus because it's like coming at me or coming behind. And this, and you see how it's like cradled up. This is looking great. Um, and again, you can do this for your favorite brands at home, send it to them, let them know they can use it on their Instagram, tag you, and you become an instant food photographer. I mean, it is a difficult trade, but what isn't? I mean, being broke and being rich are both difficult things to do. Why not pick the rich one, right? That's how I see it. Look at that. Look at that, dude. I'm just, I'm just going to save this, man. I'm just going to save this. JPEG, squirrels. <laughs> Derek. Derek's nightmare. <laughs> to, to, the, to the desktop. Okay. I'm here for you guys. If you have any questions, oh, let me save this. Let me go back to Zoom. Okay, I'm back. Uh, stop share. I'm here. I'm back here with you guys. Derek, you're right. I have to plug myself on the Instagrams. Okay, this is my yes. guy. 52 Chefs. Get on that, everyone. 52 Chefs. Also, uh, 
showing love, mover and shaker co for the gear. You know what I'm saying? I always wanted to learn how to ollie, but like I felt like I was too heavy, so I just bought a bartender shirt that looked like Basher. That's that's the story I'm sticking with. And Chinola right here. Follow Chinola. Chinola. What my house smells like right now. I should do a photo shoot of my cat with like dry Chinola on her. Wait, and, and do you still have handy the the greatest strainer ever produced in the history of strainers? A little bit. There it is. The Wu Tang strainer, baby. Strainer. Special limited edition collaboration. That's right. And for and for my finishing words, um, right on my Google Drive, I actually did a photo shoot for this strainer, okay? But we didn't have anything super purple, right? So if you're Hispanic at all, or if you've cleaned the house at all, you know that Fabuloso is very purple. So we ended up putting uh, Fabuloso in a cocktail instead of drinkable drink. And so this made it. <laughs> ah, so that's how you did it. All right. This made it. So this is Fabuloso right here. This is cleaning product. And this is like my boy Jan pouring in like a foam, like finishing the cocktail. And this right here is a, a cutting, like a sizable cutting cylinder for baking. And so it's mimicking the inside of a shaker. Um, and so... You know, to answer your question, is everything real? No, it's not. Things look better when they're not real. Just like, you know, a lot of girls on Instagram sometimes, you know, but we're catfishing. But I'm, that's the culture. I mean, but that's a case where you know, I mean, it's obviously you know the company well. Those are, those are your people where, you know, it was about, it wasn't about legal stuff. It was about getting a, the right visual representation. Exactly. Want, what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, exactly. You go exactly. to McDonald's now, and you order anything. You don't complain that it didn't look like the photo. I mean, you know, you know what it is. You know what it is. You know the answer. Now we're gonna rehash for Rick on Facebook. Rick was uh, apologizes he came in a little late, but do you want to tell Rick why you don't use a cable release? Why you do the old <laughs> end to end wall to wall stretch there? Because I'm six foot one and I'm so hand eye coordinated. That I just, I, I, I rather. He's too, he's too good. He's, technology has nothing <coughs> on Mr. 52 Chess. He doesn't need the technology. He's over there shooting with a Polaroid land camera and getting digital <laughs> images out of it. <laughs> the underwater kit. Um, <laughs> and, and frankly, frankly for you guys, I, I, I do so much studying and self-development and other things that I really, I don't keep up with the technology that comes out often and so i completely miss like whole systems that are invented you know like anything that came out this year i don't know about i don't know about at all honestly my dream for the past two years was to buy a fuji uh 50s and i did this summer but that's really where it stops like i i don't know that i can like i don't know attach it to a drone and like go in the sky three hundred thousand feet and like shoot down like i sometimes i just don't know about the technology and i just keep it ghetto and gully and and it still works and you know the the most important part is that you do it you know some people wait for technology to come out or wait till they can afford to get it or wait and wait till the time is perfect you never get around to do anything so that's very important the doing the doing is everything just make sure you got to do me a favor. Yeah. When when you put that four thousand dollar medium format camera up on a drone, you got we got to go live. It has to be a live event space because I want to watch that. Yeah. You 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 also wanna I'll, I'll also <laughs> live film when I when I do an insurance claim. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get I'll get Fuji film. I'll get Fuji film to jump on and uh, see if yeah, we can. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll make it an event. <laughs> yeah. And on the topic, if you guys are in Florida and you're trying to insure your stuff, I insure through Hill and Usher because apparently every other camera uh, insurance company or photography insurance company does not 
insure in Florida. We are always on the news, Florida man, whatever. So I guess they don't insure us, but Hillen Usher does. So I will absolutely send it. Send it to go. me. And it's right there, actually. It's safe on, on dry land. Um, yeah, it's always a good time to do this with you. Man. Always. I, I love it, man. And you know what? You just made my day by telling me that you're coming back in January. I got I to, gotta, you yeah. know, check my schedule more often. Let's, let's do it. I mean, it was a, you know, I just threw it in that last email, but you know what? Next time I'll do it with, with the 50 S and maybe we won't risk getting passion fruit on it, but we'll do some other fun stuff. There we um, go. We, we got a couple of weeks to plan it out. Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, you guys are talking to someone that until last week, I don't know still, but was, was still testing positive for COVID-19. I got COVID November 1st. And it's been 40 days. I've still been testing positive for it. But you know what? I like the, I like the quiet time. And so I'm going to continue this quiet time and really plan out what's going to happen in January. I'm going to make it extra special. I'm going to do it with the Fuji 50S for sure. Give you guys time to get yourself a Fuji in time for the class I'm going to teach with Fuji. And for sure, it's going to have to do with a food and drink for sure. Um, awesome. I'm excited about that. No, nah, we're excited to have you back, man. And, and, you know, we send our well wishes to you from the entire event space team. And I'm sure our entire viewer base uh, yeah. sends I'm the well wishes as well. Time, don't feel too bad for me. Just stay healthy, baby. Look, look at me, bro. Yeah. Do I look sick? <laughs> 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 oh, my God. I feel I, it's been such a blessing to be alone and, and, and to think and to read and to write and to journal. My goodness. So thank you guys for your, for your well wishes. Uh, I just want to say uh, God bless all the medical staff in the world right now. Wow, what a, what a crazy nine months. But I'm very lucky. I appreciate you guys wishing me well. Uh, and let's, let's wish uh, other more unfortunate people that are sick well and also people uh, trying to save lives well also. Definitely. Thank you guys, though. Thank well, you. Anthony, a huge thank you again, man, um, and to your your sponsors over there. Keep keep this guy fulfilled with the the liquor. Keep it coming so we can yeah, continue to get more going. great content from him. We didn't even mess this one up. We didn't even mess this one up. I just I could I could crack this open. Right now. <laughs> well, thank God for these sponsors. We'd be over here doing. Uh, you'd be down buying the the dollar water from the the kids on the corner doing a a really 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 <laughs> ratchet product shoot this would be a, a steel reserve 211 shoot uh, <laughs> there we go keep keep the miami keep it going with some dice and like a sandwich in a, <laughs> in a aluminum foil i'd love to see the marketing on that we'll, we'll get the we'll get our best people on it please please awesome anthony thank you so much again to all of our viewers thank you as always for tuning in and uh remember squirrels are not as dangerous as everybody thinks. So if you do get bit, very low chance of communicable, communicable diseases transferred to you, as I will point out to our dear friend, Mr. Anthony Nader here, who thought I was not gonna be joining us today after a uh, unfortunate accident this weekend. But hey, I'm here. Hopefully uh, He's I'll be here squirrels, next month. Man. Uptown squirrels, man. I'll stay away from those uptown squirrels. You know, they're, they're bold up here. They so, really are. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate uh, thank it. Thank you again, man, for, for always, yeah. always an entertaining hour. But uh, we will see you back again in January, man. Thank you. Thank you. I can't awesome. Wait. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, guys. Thank you to all of our viewers. Uh, for those of you who want to uh, see some lighting critiques, we have Mr. Tony Gale coming up in about 40 minutes. So stay tuned for that. But to the rest of you, have a wonderful afternoon. Uh, try this at home. Send Anthony your best uh, results. Check him out, 52 Chefs on Instagram, and we will catch you all next time on another rendition of the BH Virtual Event Space. Oh.